Math 152. This is a third part to uh, Section 1.2. And we're going to think about uh, what we already know, that this, these integrals are areas under a curve. So let's say I wanted to take uh, some integral, some function, and I know it's running from A to B. Now let's say it does something like this. Now, I've been saying it's area under the curve, but it's really giving me the area from the curve uh, to the x-axis. So it's this area and this area. And so what I want you to notice is this area up here that's above, this will be positive, And this area that's down below, that'll be negative. When I do this integral, it's going to take these positive values and add those negative values to them. Let me cancel them out. Like the integral on its own will do that. That's called the net signed area. So it's all the area added together. Again, these, these down here are negative. These up here are positive, And those numbers just get added together. And that, that's interesting because that means like if I had uh, some nice symmetry, like let's say I had like an x cubed or something like that, and I ran it from negative 3 to 3, and that negative has the same magnitude as that positive area, uh, that would end up being a 0. I'm going to have some, I'm going to take the integral x minus 2 from uh, 0 to 6. So, what I want you to do in this next unit, in this next piece, is just start to think about the uh, the actual geometry of these things. So I'll, I'll bring up Desmos. You can graph them by hand. So at x minus 2, and notice we were going to do it from negative 2 to 6. I'll just grab a copy of this real quick. All right, so there's that graph. Um, there's that x minus 2. It's going from 0 to 6. There's my areas right there. This part's negative, this part's positive. And if I wasn't using Desmos, I could get this by plugging in 6, right? 6 minus 2, plug it into the function, is 4. So this is point six four. Same here, this is point negative 2, 0. Now if I want to find this area, uh, like I said, I'm just going to kind of do the geometry of it. So this is a triangle. And so I know that... Um, one half base times height gives me the area of a triangle. So this is a distance of two. This is a distance of two. So this part would be one half times two minus two, which is two. And since it's below, this part is negative two. Uh, this distance from two to six is four. This distance is four. So uh, one half times two is eight. That's a positive eight. So negative two plus eight. 6. So the net signed area here is a positive 6, right? Because this took out some of that. Um, if I wanted to think about this as uh, not the net signed area, but I just wanted the total area. I just didn't want to worry about if it was positive or negative. So I'm the total area. I'm going to have to pay attention to these negative parts and turn them positive. So like the total area of this, and the integral itself won't give you that. The integral will give you that. But if I want the total area of this, I would think um, I'm basically going to absolute value both of these and add them together. So that would be 2 plus 8. Total area is 10. And the way that I would write that if I wanted to do that would be the absolute value of x minus 2 dx. Right? That, would, that would take this part and shift it up to here. It would turn all these values positive. And then I could, then I could find the, uh, the area of that. So let's... Uh, just think about a couple of these. So on each of these, if you want to use Desmos to do some of your graphing, uh, go ahead. If you can sketch it, it's not a bad uh, exercise to try and sketch it. So this goes from 3 to 7. I'm not too worried about the scale. Uh, when x is 3, if I plug that in, 2 times 3 minus 1, that's 5. So this has a height of 5. And then it's, if I plug in 7, uh, 2 times 7 minus 1, 14 minus 1, that's up here at 13 scale. So that's what my function looks like if I graph it. And I'm trying to find this area. That sure looks like a trapezoid to me. Um, so to find the area of a trapezoid, 
I'm thinking this to me this is a uh, kind of like on its side because these I have these two bases base one and base two so I'm gonna think of this flipped over like this pretend like those are actual straight lines um, and notice that this is this right like this is the top right here so that distance is five this distance here is this that's 13 and then this height right here that's four uh, that's bugging me, so I'm going to try and draw it a little bit better. A little bit. Um, I know area for a trapezoid, I can average the bases uh, to make it into a rectangle and then multiply by the height. So I'm going to go 1 half, uh, 13 plus 5, that's the average of those bases, times that height. So 18 times a half times 4, 9 times 4, 36. So this derivative is 36. Again, I can just use some geometry for that. Uh, this next one, uh, that's going to be a circle. Uh, actually, it's just going to be a semicircle, like half of a circle. And if you want, like I said, you can do this in decimal. So let me pull that up. Square root. And there it is. So notice on here, I'm going to grab this and pull it back over to the, to the works. So, notice I have the center here at 3, then I have this radius of 3, and my integral is only running from 3 to 6. So I really want that quarter of the circle. So area of a circle is pi r squared. That would give me the whole circle, but I only want a fourth of it. So I'm going to go 1 fourth of pi times the radius is 3. I'm going to say that that's fine. Great. And then this one right here, uh, same thing. I'll bring up a graph of it, and we'll do what we can. And I notice that this integral is running from 2 to 6. So there it is right there. Um, you could do it as two triangles. I could just do it as one triangle, right? Base, one half base times height. Notice this height at 4, this is up at 2. So this is a height of 2. This is a base of 4. So uh, 1 half base times height, that's 4. So this definite integral evaluates to 4. All right, I want you to get some practice on um, finding those values. So there's one other piece that I want to talk about. Um, I'm going to grab this and this to help me do it. So I'm going to clean this up. So what I want to do is I want to find the average value of this function over this interval. So here's my function. And I know that I've already evaluated uh, this, and it was 9 fourths pi. And by the average value, what I what I mean I'm finding is like what is the the average height of these? You can think of this area as just this collection of all these heights kind of thrown together. So what we're trying to find is that. And what I can do to get that, the average value of it, what's the average of all these y values, is I can take this width, the interval, and I can divide by it. In other words, I can go. 1 over b minus a. That's a third. So basically, I can take a third of it. So if I say, what was my volume? I'm going to take a third of that. Uh, that would be 3 fourths pi. So that would be my average height for this. And in, in the curves, it's not necessarily in the middle uh, when, when this is curved. Could be, might not be. Um, but that is it. So my formula for the average value, say F average, sometimes av, sometimes average, is one over the, the interval that we're doing it over. And that will give us the average value for, uh, for it. So anything that I say find the average value for, find that interval first, and then multiply it by one divided by the uh, 
how long this is, how long that interval is. All right, give the uh, practice problems a go. Send me any questions. You can either post them or message me with them.